Hi, everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the structure of the Earth. So this video is intended to help you achieve these following learning goals. Um, basically, we would like you to be able to distinguish the interior layers of the Earth based on their chemical composition and to be able to characterize them based on their physical properties. OK, so the big question for this video is that if we were able to cut the earth open, what would we find inside it? OK, so that's the big question that I would like everyone to be able to answer by the end of this video. Uh, in order to answer that, uh, we have to understand that there are two ways to uh, classify the earth's interior um, using two criteria. The first one is chemical composition. And the second one is physical properties. So for the first criteria, based on their chemical compositions, we can divide the earth layers into three main layers. The first one is the crust of the earth, which consists of mostly silicon and oxygen, okay? The second one is the mantle, and I'm going to talk about the mantle's composition later on, but let's talk about the core first. The core consists of mostly metal elements such as iron and nickel, okay? And um, so how about the mantle then? The mantle basically consists of a mixture between the crustal elements and the core elements. So the mantle has both silicon and oxygen, and it also has a good amount of iron, nickel, as well as magnesium, okay? So um, <clears throat> one thing to, you know, remember this concept, one way to remember this concept easily is to imagine that if you had a boiled egg and then you slice it open, you should be able to find that yolk right in the middle of the egg. And then right outside of it, you, we have the white of the egg, right? That kind of blankets the yolk. And then we have a thin layer of shell that protects the, the egg, okay? And that's basically, uh, you know, the, the configuration of that egg basically looks very similar to the earth's layers um, that we just discussed, okay? So the yolk would represent the, uh, the core, the white would represent the mantle and the shell, the thin shell would represent the thin crust that we have um, on earth, okay? All right, so this is the composition of the earth's interior. Um, I just want you to at least remember the three most abundant elements, okay, um, uh, for the entire earth. And that will be iron would be the first, uh, you know, would be the most abundant element for the entire earth. Uh, the second one is the, uh, the oxygen. And the last one, oh, not the last one, the third one is the silicon, okay? So the third most abundant element would be silicon. Now we talk a little bit about the crust, uh, but for now, I just want us to look into it more detail. So compositionally, we can actually subdivide the crust of the earth into two types. The first one is the continental crust and the, the second one is the oceanic crust, okay? Well, uh, obviously it's, it's actually pretty easy to distinguish them. You know, the continental crust is the one that makes up, you know, the uh, land masses that we see on earth, okay? And the second one, the oceanic crust would be the one that underlies the ocean. Well, we can't really see them directly, but it's there under, you know, uh, that makes up the, the seafloor. Okay, so compositionally, they are, they are different, okay? Continental crust has high in silicon, low in iron, whereas the opposite uh, happened in the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust has mostly iron and has a very low silicon content, okay? Because their compositions are different, then they would also appear a bit different. I mean, you can see here that continental crust um, is typically thicker than the oceanic crust, and it also has lower density than the oceanic crust, obviously, because it has high uh, silicon content, right? 
Um, and the low density of the transcendental crust makes it uh, more buoyant than the oceanic crust. This concept, again, it's, we, this will be important when we talk about plate tectonics later on in the next module. And uh, because they're compositionally different than the rock, the rock types uh, that make up these crust would also be different, okay? Um, granitic rocks are mostly found in the continental crust. Granitic rocks are characterized by high silicon content and low iron content, whereas the oceanic crust mostly consists of basaltic rocks that are typically characterized by high iron content and low silicon content. Another important feature that I would like to show you is that little red box right there that I put in that corner right there. It is called the moho. So the moho is a boundary that separates the, uh, the crust of the earth from the underlying uh, mantle, okay? So just remember that because it is an important feature uh, that we may talk about again in the future. All right, so this is just a comparison uh, between the whole earth composition and earth's crust composition, okay? So again, as I mentioned earlier, that when we think about the whole earth, then iron would be number one, uh, followed by oxygen and silicon. But when we focus more on the earth's crust, it would a bit different. It would look a bit different, okay? So oxygen, is the number one. When we just talk about the Earth's crust, then oxygen will be the most abundant element, whereas silicon will be the second element, followed by aluminum and iron eventually, okay? So please remember that composition. Um, so let's talk about the second criteria now. Uh, based on their physical properties, we can actually divide the earth into several layers, okay? Um, first thing first is that when we, you know, when I say physical properties, uh, I really mean about, you know, um, whether these layers are solid or liquid or whether these layers are um, have high temperature or low temperature or whether they're able to flow or not, okay? So we're really just talking about the physical behavior of these layers. Okay, so let's talk about the first uh, layer based on physical properties. We have the lithosphere, okay? Litho actually means rocks, okay? Um, obviously the lithosphere is the outermost part of the earth and it is rigid and it is solid, okay? Obviously we can actually walk outside and observe the rocks. They are pretty solid, I can tell you that. Um, and it does have lower temperature than the uh, rest of the layers of the earth. And another important concept is that you have to understand that the lithosphere covers the entire crust because we know the crust is solid. And it turns out that the uppermost part of the mantle is also solid, okay? Since these two layers, the uppermost part layer, the uppermost part of the mantle plus the crust are both solid, so they all belong to the lithosphere, okay? So the boundary between the mantle and the uh, overlying crust would be somewhere in the lithosphere. Therefore, the moho that I mentioned earlier would be inside the lithosphere, okay? Okay, so right underneath the solid litos lithosphere, we have the second layer, which is called the asthenosphere, which consists of mostly molten rocks. And it is hot down there, and it is uh, plastic and viscous. And these physical properties allow the asthenosphere, the, you know, the uh, materials within the asthenosphere to flow, okay? So think about that concept and remember about that concepts because we will, we will talk about this again when we talk about plate tectonics later on. Um, just imagine that we have a gooey part of the earth that is able to flow that underlies the solid part of the earth, which is called the lithosphere, okay? All right, right underneath the asthenosphere, we have the third one, which is called the mesosphere. Well, mesosphere is just the rest of the, man the mantle. 
it still consists of molten rocks and able to flow, but not as good as in the asthenosphere. And the last one is the core. Well, it turns out, even though compositionally they are pretty much the same, which is, you know, which is which mostly consists of iron and nickel and other types of metal, uh, metal elements, but physically we can actually subdivide the Earth's core into two parts. The first one is the liquid outer core. The second one is the solid inner core. Okay, so you can imagine that we have a solid inner core. And right on, right outside of it, we have a gooey, liquidy um, iron elements that are able to flow. Okay, and this concept would be very relevant uh, to what we're going to discuss in the next video when we talk about um, the Earth's magnetic field. So I think that would be it. That's all that I would like to say in this video. Um, again, remember that we can divide Earth's layers based on two criteria, based on the chemical composition and the second one is the physical properties like usual if you have questions let me know you can also post those questions um, in our q a uh, uh, forum in this course okay all righty then um, i'll see you again in the next video bye bye now